Hey guys, alright, so in this video let's go ahead and talk about uh, another definition of continuity. So this really isn't even a different definition, it's just kind of the uh, same definition from the last video, but we're just going to take it uh, and pull it apart and just kind of uh, expand it. So f of x is continuous at x equals c if and only if, uh, first of all, f of c has to exist, second of all, limit as x approaches c from the left uh, of f of x exists, third, limit as x approaches c from the right of f of x exists, and fourth, uh, they're all equal. So in other words, um, the function has to exist at x equals c, the left-hand limit at x equals c has to exist, and the right-hand limit at x equals c has to exist, and all three of these things have to equal the same thing. Okay, so let's see an example of how to use that. So find a and b so that uh, f of x is continuous everywhere and f of x is this piecewise function here. Um, it's x squared minus 6 if x is less than or equal to 2. It's 3x plus a if 2 is less than x is less than or equal to 5. And it's b minus 2x if x is greater than 5. So um, notice this is a polynomial, this is a polynomial, and this is a polynomial. So what's nice about polynomials is that they're continuous everywhere. So the only thing we have to worry about um, is what's happening at the points where the function breaks into pieces. So we just have to worry about what happens at x equals 2, because it breaks apart at 2, and we also have to worry about what happens at x equals 5, because it breaks apart at 5. So using this kind of uh, definition here, we want to guarantee that the left-hand limit at 2 and the right-hand limit at 2 and the actual function value at 2 are all the same thing, and the same thing at 5. Uh, the left-hand limit at 5, the right-hand limit at 5, and the function value at 5 all have to be the same thing. So let's go ahead and look at 2. Um, so what we need, uh, we need this, we need limits as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x to equal the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x. Uh, and we also need this to equal uh, f of 2. All right. So we actually can just ignore this equals f of 2 condition um, because uh, notice here, let's cover up this part here. So we're just going to cover up this part. Um, f of x is x squared minus 6 if x is less than or equal to 2. So if x approaches 2 from the left, uh, we're going to be on this piece here, right? So if we look at this left-hand limit, limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x, uh, that's going to be on this piece here. And this piece just by itself is continuous because it's a polynomial, right? So we actually already automatically know um, limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x equals f of 2, okay? So we know that this guy over here already equals this guy. So all we really need to show is that um, this left-hand limit equals this limit, or this limit uh, equals f of 2, because we already know the left-hand limit equals f of 2. But just for simplicity, let's uh, ignore this f of 2 here, all right? Um, so just to keep things consistent, I guess. So let's go ahead and uh, erase this definition up here so we have some room to work with. All right, so um, let's take this uh, up here. So what we want to have then is a limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x equals limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x. So that's what we need to have here. So um, let's erase these instructions. So we just need our function f of x. Okay, so uh, what's the limit as x approaches 2 from the left? Well, as we said, it's on this piece here, and it's also the same thing as f of 2, but uh, anyway, if we look at this piece here, that's going to be limit as x approaches 2 from the left of x squared minus 6. Alright, because remember, if x comes into 2 from the left, then x is always less than 2, which means we're going to be on this first piece here. All right. So now, um, what about coming into 2 from the right? Well, then what we have uh, is limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x. Um, but which piece are we going to use? So here, x is coming into 2 from the right. That means x is always greater than 2. Okay. So that corresponds to this piece and this piece. So which one do we use? Well, uh, the piece we use is this, okay, because we're taking a limit as x approaches 2 from the right. 
So eventually x is going to be really, 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 really super close to 2. So um, that means at some point we're going to be off of this third piece because this only happens when x is greater than 5. Okay? But because we're approaching 2 from the right, um, eventually x is going to uh, get closer to 2 than 5. So if we draw a number line here, um, here's a number line, here's 2, here's 5. Okay? If x is greater than 5 uh, over here, then we're on the third piece. But x comes in at 2 uh, from the right, okay? So um, because of that, uh, x is moving along here. It's coming into 2 from the right. So uh, eventually, x is going to pass 5, and we're going to be off of this third piece here. So we're going to be back here on the second piece, okay? So um, we're just going to use the second piece here. So this is going to be 3x plus a. All right, so now um, we pretty much just use direct substitution. So limit as x approaches 2 from the left of x squared minus 6 uh, is going to be 2 squared minus 6. And then over here we have uh, limit as x approaches 2 from the right of 3x plus a. That's going to be 3 times 2 plus a. Okay, so 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So we have plus a. Um, then when we solve for a, we get uh, negative 8 equals a. So that's our value of a uh, that guarantees continuity of f of x at this piece here. So as long as a is negative 8, then f of x is going to be continuous uh, at this first break here. So what about the second break? Um, well, for the second break, we need limits as x approaches 5 from the left to equal the limits as x approaches 5 from the right. Uh, so limit as x approaches 5 from the left of f of x has to equal limit as x approaches 5 from the right of f of x. Okay? So um, let's come up here and we're going to write down limits as x approaches 5 from the left of f of x equals limit as x approaches 5 from the right of f of x. Alright? So, um, now, as x comes into 5 from the left, x is always less than 5, right? So which piece are we going to use here? Are we going to use the first piece or the second piece? Well, we can use the same kind of reasoning as before, okay? If x is coming into 5 from the left, yeah, x is less than 5, but eventually it's going to be really, really super close to 5. So here the function breaks at 2 and 5. So um, if x comes into 5 from the left, uh, then it's going to be coming in somewhere over here, right? So um, eventually... Okay, x is coming in this way, so eventually x is going to pass 2 because it's coming in from the left, so it's going to pass 2 and get really close to 5. So we just need to look at the second piece here, that's all that matters uh, as x comes into 5 from the left. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So then this is going to be limit as x approaches 5 from the left of the second piece, which is 3x plus a. Alright, um, and then here this is going to be limits as x approaches 5 from the right of b minus 2x. Okay? If we approach 5 from the right, then uh, x is always bigger than 5. So that's just this piece here. So this is a b minus 2x. All right? So um, we already know that a has to be negative 8. So let's just go ahead and put that in here. So instead of 3x plus a, we're going to have 3x minus 8. Okay? Because a has to be minus 8. Uh, we already know that from the first part. Okay, so now we just do direct substitution again. Um, so, limit as x approaches 5 from the left of 3x minus 8, that's going to be 3 times 5 minus 8. And then over here what we have is uh, limit as x approaches 5 from the right of b minus 2x. Whoops, we need these parentheses here. Okay, don't forget those, those are important. Uh, they're necessary. Uh, limit as x goes to 5 from the right of b minus 2x, that's going to be b uh, minus 2 times 5, all right? So um, then what we have is 3 times 5 is 15, uh, minus 8 is 7. So we have 7 equals what? b minus 2 times 5 is b minus 10. So 7 equals b minus 10, that means b uh, equals 17. So 17 equals b, all right? So uh, if b is 17 
and if a is negative 8, then this function f of x is guaranteed to be continuous everywhere. So again, just to recap real quick, um, this part's a polynomial, this part's a polynomial, this part's a polynomial. So each of these three pieces by themselves are continuous, um, but uh, what we have to worry about is what happens where this function breaks apart into these pieces. So we need to guarantee that this first piece continuously connects to the second piece, and we also have to guarantee that the second piece uh, continuously connects to the third piece. And that's guaranteed to happen as long as b is 17 and a is negative 8. Right? So that's how we use this um, slightly different definition of continuity to do problems like this.